Hey there, Ryan Kings on your founder of Vertex School. So do you want to learn how to create realistic humans? One of the things that's important about that entire area, virtual, uh, digital avatars, all of that stuff is blend shapes. Not a lot of people talk about blend shapes, but in this video, you're going to learn the simple process for creating uh, expressions for a realistic character. And you're going to learn this from Abdul Rahman, who's been doing it for five plus years over at Snappers. I'm really excited for you to learn this. Check it out. Let's start with a little bit of anatomy. The frontalis originates along the brow, moves up, and terminates before the hairline. There's two different parts of the frontalis with a little bit of a valley in between them. But when we look at this as action units, you gotta remember that there's an inner and an outer. To begin sculpting the blend shape, first make sure that you're at the highest subdivision level and that you create a layer. You might find it useful to kind of paint on a brow with the mask brush and then go to the texture sub palette and just say create new from mask. Then switch to the lowest resolution level, which is where we do most of the blend shape work and just start pulling the vertices straight up and back slightly. Don't worry about the skull yet, but you do have to consider the way in which the muscle itself moves. So the frontalis starts at the bottom and goes up to the hairline, but it also pulls on the hairline downwards. So if you're going to sculpt this correctly, you're going to need to take that action into account and you're going to need to be able to uh, start at the top, moving those vertices down. Make sure to carry the effect over to the side of the face. And then to also leave that little valley right there in the middle of the forehead so it dips down a little bit and reflects the musculature. Pinch the nose in slightly and be mindful of what small changes we're making here. All right, these are very small millimeter, less than millimeter changes that'll propagate up and help us create a really strong sense of realism. Grab the nudge brush and set the Z intensity to somewhere around four, really low. And then just start brushing along the surface or along the direction of the muscle. Just pulling geometry up ever so slightly, pulling it up, pulling it down to augment the, the adjustments that you've already made. Using the layer slider, test out the movement. Remember, we don't have the skull put back in yet, so we're just looking at the movement. If that works for you, then it's time to put the skull back in. To do that, we're going to duplicate our subtool and we're going to duplicate the layer on the original subtool. This is going to be called our projection layer because we're going to project the original skull into it. Make sure your layer is in record mode. Make sure in the subtool palette, both subtools are visible. In this case, we have solo mode on, but that's not gonna affect too much. When you're ready, just go into the subtool palette and press project. That'll push the geometry of our model out so that we get the skull or the brow shapes there. Next, we need to transfer the sculpting from our projection layer into our brow riser layer. To do that, go into the Morph Target subpalette and click Store Morph. Then turn your layer off, go into your first layer and make sure you're in record mode. Then select the Morph Target brush, focus your attention right there where the bone is going to be, and then begin sculpting that shape in. Set your Z intensity to somewhere around 6 and your focal shift to somewhere around 30. Using the slider in the layer itself, test this out. Take a look at it, see how you feel about it. There's still more work to be done, but is it moving in the right direction? When ready, let's create the guidelines for the forehead. So create a new layer, and we'll sculpt in this area with the dam standard brush or something like that. These aren't our final wrinkles. These are just us kind of providing a basic guideline. So make sure that you are evaluating the structure of these guidelines and you're getting all of the separate chunks that they come in. 
Then switch the layer back to your original action unit and begin to sculpt in some wrinkles and some folds using the guides that we did in the other layer to help. Notice how Abdurrahman is sculpting really the edge of where it's folding. He's not putting it right in the middle, but really right there at the edge so that it has that believability. To get more detail, just turn the guidelines off and then go back into your action unit uh, layer and then start sculpting in more controlled, better refined wrinkles. Test them out by using the slider in the layer itself. Does it feel like skin is actually sliding over the bone and gathering? Now, you're not really going to make any changes here. You're just trying to observe and see what needs to be changed. When you're ready to make fixes, there's a special way that we do them. So first turn the layer off. Then you go down into the morph target and you'll delete whatever morph targets there and store a new morph target. Then you're going to go back to the layer and duplicate the layer just so that you've got one that's safe because you don't want to screw this up. It's really hard to go back. Select the morph brush and set the Z intensity to somewhere around three and then just lightly brush along the areas that you want to adjust. Test it out and you know, if you feel like you've got it right where you want it, go in, adjust it a little bit. Clay buildup can be a great brush to add in a little bit of extra form. Go back in with damn standard and uh, really just get the sense of that, that uh, flesh kind of folding over itself. With the forehead area taken care of, it's time to pay some attention to the area underneath the brow and what happens to the skin in the eye socket and around the nose. So start lifting those up slightly, but make sure that you start out with a mask that protects your eyelid. In this case, we used a simple topological mask in ZBrush. This is definitely one of those areas where painting the brow in helps. So you might wanna make sure that your texture is on when you start doing this. Don't forget the skull underneath there, so you might have to go back in and sculpt some of that right around the glabella, along the superorbital margin out there to the edge where the external angular process of the frontal bone is, and just really detail out the bottom part of the brow. Check out the deformation from a side view and make sure that there's no crazy or unwanted projections out into space. Just go back and forth and make sure that you're comfortable with it. And then keep working the sculpt until you feel good, like you have a good solid sense of it. And that's how you sculpt the action unit for brows up. It's going to take a little bit of understanding of the musculature. It's going to take a little bit of understanding about how we build action units inside of ZBrush and remembering the skull structure underneath. Hey there, so I hope you learned something amazing out of this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to get up to date when we do more of these videos, which we're planning on. Abdul Rahman's class is actually right over there. It's open right now. It's at Vertex School. So make sure to check that out. There'll be a link down below. And like I said before, there's not a lot of people teaching this and especially people who have five plus years experience doing it. So I'm really excited for you to learn from Abdul Rahman. Again, thanks for checking out the video. Till next time.